SRAM being charged with operating an unlicensed money transmitter business, that's not talking about BitInstant itself, because BitInstant, BitInstant was licensed, it was following the regulations. It seems like to me that they're just, they're basically saying, and SRAM is agreeing that the, to them when they say this by, by the plea deal, is that him transferring like a million dollars worth of, of money to, to um, his co-defendant, Robert Fiella, to sell on Silk Road, um, that itself is an unlicensed money transmission business. So um, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of weird how the, the legal system is trying to um, basically say that, you know, you don't have to have an actual company that doing this stuff. If you are transacting like a million dollars or more in, in Bitcoin transactions that are tangentially related to, to an illegal enterprise, then they can try and hit you with this money license you know, transmitter thing anyway, um, which, you know, pretty, pretty interesting that, that they, they, that they can do that and that defendants might actually plead guilty to that. Um, so I guess if for anyone, you know, thinking that, oh, like I made this great Bitcoin business, I'm good, I'm fully licensed, I'm fully regulated. Um, if you think you can do stuff on the side, um, that is kind of in a gr legal gray area, they'll still come after you, even if you mm -hmm. have like an, a fully licensed business on the front of it. If you're doing stuff on the side, million dollars worth, um, there's people who, you know, work for the government and are probably analyzing the blockchain, these huge transactions and stuff like that, to try and nab people like Shrem. And um, it's tragic that they got him in the first place, because in my opinion, I don't think that this money license transmitter bullshit um, should really be a crime. Um, it, it, it's it's not like it's not like he was funding you know um you know drug cartels himself it's not like he was funding murderous drug cartels in, in mexico who chop people's heads off and and do crazy stuff like that he he was just you know if the allegations are true he was just um helping uh, uh an existing market um you know need uh, it just happened to be an unregulated um, t totally free marketplace that was created on, on the dark net and he wanted to support that and he also made some money off it at the same time which really pissed off the government if you are helping out illegal activities and you're also making a lot of money off it that's when they'll that's really when they'll come after you so uh yeah yeah, yeah uh shrimps uh, the original charge that he pled not guilty to was conspiracy to commit money laundering. Uh, so it, it sounds like Fiello was, you know, the real the real criminal, the guy who's like actually laundering the coins, and you know, Shrim was using BitInstant to give him access to cheap coins. So Shrim was basically guilty of being associated with a money launderer, and you know, the government is accusing or accused him of um, of knowingly contributing to a money laundering operation. Um, and then when he decided to plead guilty to lesser charges, which ended up being unlicensed money transmission, running an unlicensed money transmission business. Um, so yeah, definitely you got to be careful what you're doing. And just because just because uh, Bitcoin is kind of like a gray market phenomenon doesn't mean it exempts you from doing things in the black market. You could still get in a lot of trouble, regardless of whether or not you th you think that the things you're doing should be illegal or not. Yeah. Uh, the government definitely thinks that they should be illegal and they're going to punish you for it. So. Yeah. I mean, they, they have the resources. They don't have the resources to go after like everyone and try and track like all the people who use Bitcoin. That, that'd be ridiculous. It'd be too hard unless they have a quantum com computer who, that can like analyze all this stuff with an algorithm or something. But, but they, they were aware of Silk Road for a very long time. I think it, it came to the attention of the US Senate like as early as as early as 2010 maybe or maybe 2011. And you know, the government was watching it for basically 2 years after that. And it's they're not stupid. They know how to get on the dark net. They just can't track people that easily. But like if if they notice that a certain seller is making a, a ton of money, um, doing this stuff like they're they're gonna go after the big the big fish first and you know they 
They went after Ross Ulbricht. They went after Charlie Schramm. The people who are basically dealing in, you know, at least a million dollars worth of Bitcoin um, for for this enterprise. And like, <laughs> they if if the allegations are true, they had some balls. They had some balls doing this stuff. And and apparently, like, um, based on the allegations and the and the charges that were filed against Charlie Schramm, the government seems to have known uh that like or at least claimed that shrem you know knew what faella was doing on the silk road he he actively like promoted um faella's um activities on silk road and laundering the bitcoins but how would the government know that stuff unless they somehow got access to their email correspondence right like how how do you discern someone's motivation uh based on their even if you can analyze the blockchain and all that um they, they must have found a way to track their email correspondence or message correspondence or something and uh basically try and try and discern the motivations of of shrem and uh, and and use that in the case against him so that's that's like another that's another aspect to this that kind of brings up privacy implications like like they they have they have the resources to to pull up email databases with the help of the NSA and um and and try and you know spread that spread that uh information across these various federal agencies to to try and catch people like this who are making millions of dollars on the you know online crypto black market so they've got the resources to go after the big fish for sure yeah and a few weeks ago um you know, Ross Ulbricht's defense team basically accused the FBI of of searching uh, Silk Road servers and Ulbricht's computers without a warrant. So you know, it's definitely not out of the question that they wouldn't you know actually get into the records of people working uh, like within the exchange if they did it to mm. the person running uh, the marketplace. So it's. Maybe it's not as much of a tinfoil hat conspiracy as it sounds. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're doing it. 